Welcome to News Click. There have been in the last several weeks a number of issues uh, where the services, uh, which is the Army, Indian Air Force, and Naval personnel, uh, feel that they have been shortcharged uh, by the Ministry of Defense over a number of issues that affect them. We have with us uh, General Lieutenant General Prakash Katoch, who retired as commander of the Special Forces and who's seen, of course, uh, action in both Northeast as well in Jammu Kashmir in his long career. He is a military analyst and uh, a prolific writer too. Welcome to News Tech, sir. Uh, I'd like to start by asking you the first question on April 5th that uh, a letter was sent by Comptroller General of Defense Accounts to the ex-servicemen's uh, welfare uh, unit of the Ministry of Defense pointing out, and I quote from the para 3A of the letter, quote, whether there is any logic to initiate process of one rank, one pension, revision, stroke equalization, once the pension of past and current pensioners have been equ equate, uh, equated on January 1, 2016 by the Seventh Pay Commission. So my question to you, sir, is why did A, the Controller General of Defense Accounts feel compelled to send this letter? Second, what is your take? Because revision and equalization in a layman's understanding are two different things. So why is the CGDA conflating revision with equalization, sir? I think it is a mischief to send the soldiers on a wild goose chase again. Hmm. The uh, revision or the equalization was to be done on 1st July this year, 2019. And Sanjeev Mittal, who is the CGDA, surely is not a retard. Because although the, impl the initiation of the revision was done on uh, 1st January 2016, the implementation was with, with effect 1st of July 2014. And in fact, the Gazette notification clearly says that the actualization will be done after five years, which falls on 1st of July. So this is actually a mischief. Now, either can has I, the MOD I asked them. Sir, is the revision and equalization one and the same thing? See, equalization is like the aura that a soldier of the same service, of the same rank, same length of service gets the same pension. This has been the long-standing yeah. demand. Equalization actually for one rank, one pension means every year. But the government said, all right, we'll do it after five years. So call it revision, call it equalization. It was supposed to be done from 1st of July, which is today. So Seven Pay Commission was not looking into equalization. They were looking into uh, revision of current salary structures. Absolutely. They were not looking into OROP. Okay. Now what CGDA has done is that the initiation of the one rank, one pension with effect 1st of uh, July 2014 was started on 1st January because they were waiting for the 7th Pay Commission. Mm. But the equalization was to be done after five years, which, which is today. Okay, the, it's due now in yes. 2019. Yes. Okay. So why do you think, I mean, obviously there is such a big difference between revision and equalization and it's not the two one and the same thing. Uh, why would the Controller General uh, of Defense Accounts go out of its way to conflate the two things? See, as I said, it's a mischief. Okay. And if, if the MOD had not asked him to equalize 1st of July, then his, there is no logic of his initiating a note today. And if you look at the language, the lang language is actually a slap on the face of MOD. That why are you asking for equalization? So it is actually a mischief between the bureaucrats and the CGDA. Okay. So you believe that it's the bureaucracy which is yes. responsible for it. Let's take another issue which has also been causing a lot of heartburn to the, to the services and the veterans, um, which has to do with, there have been several anomalies in 7th Pay Commission. So even if we 
for the time being forget the record and the history of earlier pay commissions the point is even seventh pay commission which we are currently uh, services are you know uh, getting benefits as per that uh, what were the anomalies or at least some of the major ones uh, which still remain unsolved or they have been solved uh, how many have been sorted out and how many remain to be solved i would say none have been sorted out in fact the anomalies are starting with the third central pay commission and hardly any sorting out has been done it's all bunkum even in the case of orop they mm -hmm. had a, a one man justice ready commission which submitted his report in 2016 and they are sitting on it and now they say we want another committee to look into those recommendations now as far as seventh pay commission is the major thing which is the justice ready committee was appointed after the seventh pay commission was announced no before the one rank one pension they submitted their report on in 2016 Okay. They had been, I think, appointed a year earlier. I don't know what exactly was the time when they were appointed, hmm. right? In two thousand October sixteen, they submitted the report. Twenty hmm. years after that, twenty months after that, in July last year, Defence Minister Sita Raman says that we are still studying it, and then she told the uh, Parliament that we appointed another committee to look into these recommendations. Okay. In January this year. the supreme court of india has uh, given a notice to the center that why have you not resolved the uh, you know the anomalies of the europe hmm. then yeah, on 4th of march mrs sita raman again uh, pre election rally see the government is going to resolve these soon nothing has happened okay so they are actually taking the veterans on a wild goose chase and i would like to say that europe is not a demand it is authorization it's a commitment it's a it's commitment a, which was there from 1947 yeah. to 1973 yeah. in any case pension is a deferred wage so Absolute. the people who have served a number of years they are entitled to it no there Now, is no in the seventh no pay commission hmm. what has i'll just give you one example that a civil civilian officer or a say a ips officer or a central armed police officer hmm. posted in uh, lay This is ten thousand feet only, or in Guwahati, is getting a allowance of seventy-five thousand rupees a month. Mm. So the so pay allowances have so become much higher than the military. No, what about the services? I mean, when you say that they are getting services, only get a normal high altitude allowance, which is how much? Uh, <laughs> I don't know exactly. But this right. is less, much less, much less, much much less. Okay, okay, much much less. Okay. So what happened to the disability pensions which were being contested by the Ministry of Defence? in so many instances uh, the government came out in fact minister of defense then nirmala sitharaman is on record again pointing out that they'll be uh, taking a stand on that and in fact they plan to intend to not file cases against uh, veterans who are entitled to disability pension but in they between there was one sentence on case to case basis okay right In 2017, there was a RTI to the Ministry of Defence, hmm. and they came out that the government has spent 47 crores fighting legal cases against okay. the pension of widows and disabled. Right? 47 crores. Yes, it's on record. Yeah. And they were employing a battery of lawyers, paying them two lakhs rupees per month from the uh, defence budget. to fight these cases and not a single case has been won by the ministry of defense that is the status so the now again this business have come up about you know the uh, income tax exemption on to be given to disabled or not disabled But the question is a disabled is if it is happens during military service it does not have to be you know the the uh, in operations it was happened in military operations in uh, military service then he is a whether in field or in peace zone yes but there this letter by the ex dg afms of mm. 16 december 2014 mm. chap called lieutenant general b k chopra written to the uh, defense secretary now i don't know whether he wrote it or he was asked to write it 
where you say that some of the lieutenant generals and major generals and equivalent are you know feigning at the time of retirement that there is a disability and they are pressuring people to you know not give them uh, to declare them as disabled so that they get disability pension the question is first you can't generalize everybody into the same category mm. if a few people have defaulted cash them reopen their cases you see in this letter jan chopra writes to the defense secretary i would like to seek your views how to curb this menace but oh, damn it you are the medical authority and you are directly under the ministry of defense you say all right these five cases i like them firstly disability to be stopped and cases to be reopened why did they at towards the end declare them some disabled mm. not only that if you are being pressurized within your own service why can't you have say firstly you say in the last 4 years of your service any disability anybody asking for disability there will be a tri service board but in any case is it not the army headquarters which has to approve it and once the army headquarters has approved it where is the question of anybody why should anybody challenge what the army headquarters has approved i don't know that's that's the type of uh, propaganda which is being done maybe there are some cases if there are some cases you see mm. like say in the army i got a weapon i go berserk and shoot some people will you withdraw the weapons from everybody mm. i mean that is stupid there are people like general pankaj joshi mm. there are people like general uh, obroy general cardozo who have lost limbs in operations now but they continue to serve now you can't say ki okay their income tax will not be excused whole lot of countries are giving it and how much is the money so this is being ridiculous and it is being done at a time when the government is changing okay. you see all these cases the one about the europe also cgda letter government changes defense minister changes okay we'll come to that there is something else now which is also bothersome i mean the disability pension there was a recent uh, report that uh, government of india plans to do away with the third category of disability uh, pensioners those who incur disability uh, when they are not in the field okay and you referred to that have they withdrawn that order not to my knowledge they have not not to my knowledge you see the point is what do you call operations war hmm even kargil operation was not declared as war there are people who are say uh, in counter insurgency counter terrorist operations are losing limbs in one of the operations my buddy lost both his eyes mm he that's not war so you going to take away his disability pension so if it, there is no gazette notification declaring the state of war service people no. get no, service no. people they, can be till denied. now they were getting it's only now these people are trying to say ki okay if it is an operation then we will give you otherwise we will not give you i mean okay. this is ridiculous okay what is it what is action action is happening everywhere not only that if you are in service then but tell me if i mean these are irritants uh which can be dealt with and resolved of course uh yet if they remain and Uh, they are even after a commitment is made how do you read it i mean wh- because at one on the one hand government of india is now committed to as they s- say shedding a lot of flab in the armed forces especially the indian army and to attracting more uh young blood into the force and make it more attractive for them to come for short commission uh, uh for short duration uh, service now if these irritants remain how do you make the force more attractive for people to join even for shorts that's exactly short the point and in fact a previous chief like general ved malik has said is no more attractive option at all for the youth hmm. today the things are going the way things are going i would like to advise the youth don't join the military join the uh, central armed police forces how do you react to this balloon that was floated recently about the move to uh, instructing the army headquarters 
to force the commanders of Uri Nagrota and Sunjuwan camp to resign because they failed to prevent the, the attack on their cantonments. Now this has caused a lot of, I mean, although army headquarters has not officially come out, but enough uh, has been said by others to make it very clear that the army is very unhappy with this. And their argument is that the argument is twofold. One is that if they have already taken an action against, I mean, how can you, I mean, the d double jeopardy emergence that after taking all the steps that you was required for the army headquarters to take, now you are asking the same force to say, no, you dismiss them or virtually force them to resign. How, what message does it send? to the service people? i will uh, like to make addition to the previous question first. Okay. You know, in the business of pension, 45% of the pension budget or defense is being consumed by 22% of the civilian defense employees. Hmm. You have 6.5 lakh civilian defense employees against 14.5 hmm. lakhs army. Hmm. Every civilian defense employee is five times more expensive then the uniformed counterpart, whether serving or retired. Mm. How do you justify that? Their, their uh, strength is not being cut down. Now coming to this business of, you know, that you send these people from... Uh, and sir, in the Uri's case, the, yeah. the commander had taken over just um, uh, reportedly two days prior to the attack. That is not the only point. Yeah. You see, it's a question of fortifications and defense of uh, the military uh, bases, yeah. installations which is sorely lacking. Like at the time when Uri was attacked, it had only one cattle fence Correct. for security parameter. It didn't even have a HSTI, right? Take the case of, uh, um, say, uh, Sun no, Sun the Sunjwan camp. I've put photographs on the social media. You know, they're three-story buildings, illegal, next to the camp overseeing the entire garrison. They've been permitted by the government. Now, you want, there are, there are uh, buildings which are blocking the observation of the observation towers. Now, is the army supposed to fight decades after decades to evict these jokers out? In certain cases, the government has approved, not in uh, JNK, in certain cases, the area which is not supposed to have any construction, they reduced it from 100 meters to 10 meters, officially. Why have it at all? And this, and then you have ordnance depots and being blown up. What is the joke? There are politicians who've got these buildings, especially one in Nagrota, which was also yes, attacked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the accountability? Was the ex deputy chief minister. Now you say that, all right, we've given money to the vice chiefs, we've given the money. You know, but they tell can do. One thing. Where is the money on ground? No, there was a project after the URI, all these incidents. There was a project which was taken up for walling, for putting CCTV, for having central monitoring, wiring, etc., etc. But no funds were made available for that. Funds were made available partially okay. after the Sujanpur, uh, the Sunjwan camp was attacked. Till that time, they were sitting quiet. Otherwise, that Phillips Campos Committee was a very, very comprehensive report. Hmm. And who submitted their report in 2016? And in fact, in 2017, all the uh, services had done their own uh, appreciation. Hmm. The requirement was something like 2000 uh, crore plus. Hmm. But what has been given is some 14 point something, which again is released. But then you have a problem of funds on ground and you have a problem of the procurement process, which is again through the financial advisors and the uh, which is controlled by the Ministry of Defense. So things don't move. My final question to you for today, sir, is that there are, I mean, this might come as a incidentally, surprise to... Incidentally, uh, yes. my input is, this was no instruction by the government to the army. Hmm. This is a lie which has been put through again by the bureaucrats. As far as I know, okay. there's not, no communication from the MOD that please send these commanders home. We'll so who's in that. charge? Yeah, we'll come to that. Uh, my last question is that... Um, there are many items that the army purchases from ammunition, clothing, tentage, etc. Uh, as well as vehicles that the services require, the military requires, on which GST is put. So for tentage and clothing and 
ammunition, it's 18%. For army vehicles and many other items, it's 28%. Which is one um, I mean Ministry of Finance allocates certain money and part of the money goes back to them through this GST. How does it, I mean, here it's not just a question of bureaucracy, it's a question of government and its political will. So while we focus on the bureaucracy, there is also a larger issue because obviously, if the Ministry of Finance is imposing GST, obviously it's the government's decision to do so. It cannot be done otherwise. How do you, how do you feel about that as, as a... See, as it is, the defense forces are actually passed for uh, modernization. There are not mm. enough funds. And the uh, Standing Committee report on defense, the report when General Khanduri was uh, the Correct. chief and after that he was sacked, was that these many projects we have to shut down because there is no money. On top of that, you want to give GST and that GST you want to give when each and every item without exception is about twice or thrice more expensive from the DRDO and the OFB coming to the armed forces compared to the prices in the uh, open market. On top of that, you want to put GST? I mean, this is a government decision. If you want a military in that uh, you know, okay. state, it's up to you what you want to do. Do you expect, this is my final question, and we'll discuss it once the budget comes out. Do you expect any major revision in budget allocation for defense this time? If it will happen, it will be very marginal. Otherwise, the same government, the stance is the same. The thinking is there's going to be no war, despite the fact that you say if uh, the uh, NSA of the Secretary of State of US is coming, then they say the government has prepared a budget of 10 billion arms to be purchased and whatnot. But the thinking is there's going to be no war. So they say, all right, the military, the army specifically, has to be in a corner. It is a necessary evil. Even now, the, the uh, focus is on the sea, which should be. Even the defense minister has said now that, that we have to look at the sea. Of course, we have to look at sea. What about your borders? Where are there going to be encroachments? In Arunachal, your troops are still sitting behind because there are no roads. There is no infrastructure. That's it. Thank you for, uh, Thank you. for your time, General. And we will, of course, be calling on you again. Thank you. Uh, for uh, your opinion and your perspective on a number of issues which have to do with the defense and the military. Thank you. But thank you for today. Thank you. thank you for watching News Click. If you have any suggestion, any comments, do give us your feedback. Thank you for today.